at the outset i should thank uh, our governor our organizing chairman and secretary scientific committee for giving me an opportunity to express few aspects uh, of uh, diabetes and cardiovascular disease and i was just listening to dr jyotirmay paul who is an expert in vaccination adult immunization is a passion for uh, physicians and i am apa i was just listening to him the current aspects of vaccination is really done well and needs uh, i mean uh, have a lot of appreciations now ladies and gentlemen it's a topic very commonly talked about cardiovascular disease in diabetes all of us know why we are worried about t2dm diabetes here what i mean is a t2dm that it is equivalent to cardiovascular disease that is why all of us are i am mean, concerned i'll just go through these few aspects the clinical presentations pathophysiology what is macro and micro cardiovascular outcome trials and how to prevent and a few recommendations i'll try to fastly go through during the time given to me as all of us are aware of diabetes uh, and first two to four fold increase in the risk of coronary artery disease stroke and peripheral artery disease and macro events on diabetes remains macro vascular event the leading cause of i mean mortality insulin resistance is the basic underlying cause for all these macro vascular diseases this is an interactions of the traditional and non traditional risk factors in diabetes mellitus like diabetes i mean genetic factors obesity environmental factor they get into a i mean chronic inflammation insulin resistance endothelial system i am mean, dysfunction homocystinemia and all vascular systems affected leading to cardiovascular disease the incidence as per the i mean prahim i mean framingham cohort study the incidence of cvdm diabetic men is about twice and women is about three times i mean respectively the mortality in men with diabetes without coronary artery disease i mean almost equivalent to men with coronary artery disease but the mortality is uh, higher in women with coronary artery disease and diabetes this why I mean, what it means is the incidence is high the mortality is also high in women these are the cardiovascular risk categories there is a very high risk when there is a target organ damage and three or more major risk factors when it is t1 dm is more than 20 years we say it is a very high risk for cvd a high risk is when the uh, diabetes duration is uh, more than 10 years and moderate risk young people with a duration of diabetes which is uh, i mean less than 10 years these are the cardiac complications of uh, i mean diabetes all of us know acute myocardial infarction silent cvd a cardiomyopathy a heart failure and hypertension and here the clinical presentation the cardiac side hypertension is a very common in people with t1 and t2 dm and the incidence rate is around 30 to 60 t2 dm is much more maybe due to the diabetic nephropathy and diabetics are, appears to be con i mean contribute directly to the development of diabetic cardiomyopathy annual mortality goes up to i mean 20 percent myocardial infarction in people with diabetes coronary artery disease is uh, i mean height up to th i mean 40% in many countries beyond a clinically i mean uh, obvious coronary artery disease silent heart disease in people with diet uh, in diabetes is common up to 10 to 20% than with people without diabetes and here it may be due to a diabetic autonomic neuropathy also heart failure is about 2.4 per fold more in men and five in women again the not only the disease complications are also more in women again i would like to stress because um, women in the pre menopausal age are not are protected from cardiac events cardiovascular if uh, but if they are diabetics they are not protected microvascular disease is again contributing for increased uh, i mean heart failure incidence on the vascular side we have seen a cardiovascular can be cerebrovascular stroke and dementia peripheral arterial disease renovascular disease and cardiac autonomic neuropathy here the cerebrovascular diabetes is a major risk factor for the development of carotid atherosclerosis and stroke data from the emerging risk factors collaboration found the diabetes was associated with 2.27 fold increase in the risk of ischemic stroke 
and 1.5 fold i mean you increase in the risk of hemorrhagic stroke diabetic uh, i mean cerebrovascular disease is prone for both ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes and also i mean a chronic vascular disease is uh, leads to cognitive impairment, impairment dementia and even an alzheimer's disease the peripheral arterial disease twofold increase in the risk of limb ischemia ankle breaker index is the marker when it is less than 0.9 we should always suspect peripheral artery disease yeah, renal vascular disease is very common in diabetics though clinically it can represent as a i mean albuminuria or a vascular uh, i mean entity as a hypertension here a gfr is going on declining ultimately ends in a end stage renal disease cardiac autonomic neuropathy is a definite entity which is now recognized as a cause for increased mortality dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system with an increased sympathetic activity i mean metabolic abnormalities are hyperglycemia and insulin resistant and two pathological processes are the atherosclerosis and arterial stiffening a premature atherosclerotic changes and accelerated arterial thickening leads to cardiovascular disease ki atherosclerosis and arterial stiffening are the I mean, end results of hyperglycemia and insulin resistance these are the pathological mechanisms which all of us are aware the complications of diabetes can be microvascular or macrovascular among the macrovascular you have stroke heart disease peripheral vascular disease microvascular you have diabetic retinopathy nephropathy and neuropathy and these are the various components pathophysiology in the macro macrovascular side as we discussed earlier hyperglycemia is an important factor i mean due to an insulin resistance and a premature atherosclerosis dyslipidemia inflammation arterial stiffening endothelial dysfunction and even an epicardial adipose tissue increase in the microvascular side you have an autonomic nervous system dysfunction impaired vascular repair angiogenesis and uh, a local metabolism within the time limit i will take you around very quickly hyperglycemia the i mean the, i mean in the polyol pathway and exo as i mean flux advanced glycation end products are increased and it leads to platelet aggregation and an atherosclerosis and pro atherogenic mechanisms are associated with hyperglycemia as i said through polyol pathway age pkc exo main pathway all of them lead to increased superoxide formation insulin resistance the receptors are there on the endothelial cells and vascular smooth muscles and micro i mean macrophages and when it becomes a uh, i am insulin resistance there is hyper i mean insulinemia and it definitely affects the vascular system this is how the intra cellular pathogenesis takes place leading on to i mean insulin resistance and in obesity always there is insulin resistance may be generic or due to dyslipidemia and in a cardiac myocyte these damages can be summarized into three actions alteration in the insulin signaling signaling increased substrate accessibility and inflexibility in metabolic changes the premature atherosclerosis is an important component of cardiovascular disease in diabetes which is a very common factor this is there is an atherogenesis atherogenesis progression goes to atherothrombosis leads to a vessel wall occlusion and manifests as a, a myocardial infarction or a stroke if there is a, a, a definite diabetic dyslipidemia which in our country is dominated by hypertriglyceridemia with a low hdl and moderately high hdl all these dyslipidemia i mean in diabetes promotes atherosclerosis and endothelial dysfunction also in a chronic inflammation i mean diabetes with obesity associated with increasing number of adip i mean adipokines arterial stiffness normally all of us know arterial blood flow is a pulsatile flow when it there is a vessel thickening there is a uniform flow 
and that has lot of effect on the blood supply to the I mean, target organs. I mean, clinically or as clinicians, we know a carotid plaque by the carotid intima medial thickness, it's a surrogate marker for atherosclerosis and an endothelial dysfunction is very, very common in when there is a diabetic, uh, I mean, insulin deficiency or resistance, the vascular repair, see, vascular system is uh, uh, bound to have a damage every day and it has to be repaired promptly. When there is an impaired vascular repair, always a vascular plaque formation occurs. About 80% of with diabetic people die with a thrombotic stroke and it is due to a hypercoagulable state of these people. An epicardial adipose tissue is a marker which could be detected in a, during an echo or a CT when there is a, I mean, increased uh, epicardial adipose tissue, it is always associated with coronary artery disease and it can be taken as a marker when it is removed, it always helps for a therapeutic intervention. This is a study which says when there is a, I mean, there is an adipose tissue, uh, tissue is more, the, the incidence of coronary mortality and morbidity is more. These are all very fruit factors. Coming to the microvascular diseases, the small vessel damage is not due to atherosclerosis and not precipitated by lipid level. This is what we should know. See, every time when there is a, a cardiac problem, we say it is due to atherosclerosis and due to lipid level. Whereas the microvascular disease is not. It is contributed by an autonomic nervous system dysfunction, impaired vascular repair, angiogenesis and local metabolism. Uh, that I will just briefly take you through. These are the risk factors. Advanced glycogen end product, ROS, angiotensin, inflammatory cytokines. These are the protective factors. Insulin itself is a protective factor, anti-inflammatory cytokine. When there is an imbalance between both, we get into a microvascular disease. Microcirculation is regulated by central and local regulatory mechanism. Central regulations via the autonomic and parasympathetic nerves. Local regulation is by the substances produced by the endothelial cells. When there is a deficiency in the autonomic nervous system or in the local metabolism, we always go into a microvascular disease. Diabetic autonomic neuropathy, it's a well-known entity and that is the cause for all microvascular disease. Angiogenesis, the vascular endothelial growth factors increase the small vessel, I mean proliferation that occurs in the retina, in the brain, in the kidney, in the foot and in the nervous system. The local metabolisms are due to the polyol pathway are hyperactive and advanced glycation end products are there and plasma, calicrine, bradykinin system all could be affected and leading on to, I mean, uh, a, a vascular damage. This is, is in summary of the diabetes with the cardiovascular disease, hyperglycemia, insulin resistance, atherosclerosis and arterial stiffness leads to hypercoagulability, dyslipidemia, endothelial dysfunction and ANA dysfunction goes for a macrovascular disease. Clinically, we get a heart failure. It can be an ischemic event and a thrombotic event also or due to a cardiomyopathy also. But various studies have said that for every HbA1c 1% increase, 12% there is an increase in heart failure. What does it mean? When the blood sugar level is not properly controlled, the incidence of, uh, I mean, heart failure is more in diabetic people. Any number of studies are there. I'll just quickly go through the UKPDA study and then VADT study. All of them say there is, a, I mean, whenever there is a tight glycemic control, 12% reduction in all diabetic related endpoint and 25% reduction in microvascular disease. This has been confirmed in advanced trial, a car trial, and the, I mean, as well as Teno and DCCT, all trials say when there is a stiff, I mean, diabetic control, the vascular complications are less. Now, the therapeutic approaches are aspirin for the primary prevention of CVD. It, till today, it is, uh, I mean, controversial, but regardless of the age, all senior clinicians recommend a high-dose statin and a low-dose, uh, I mean, aspirin for the prevention. And uh, when there is an intensive glycemic control, and uh, the targets are definitely, 
I mean, the cardiovascular disease targets are definitely I mean, reduced. These are the recent 2019 European Society of Cardiology guidelines. It is very large. I have summarized it. I will put it across. And those who are interested can definitely get it from the website. It has fixed the targets for blood pressure, targets for lipid and antiplatelet therapy and glucose, uh, I mean, lowering agent. And how to do your cardiovascular risk assessment is also, I mean, given there. And drug therapy is also given there. But the last word is very important here. Uh, one is the aliskirin for heart failure with, I mean, with reduced ejection fraction diabetes is not recommended. DP4 inhibitor soxagliptin in heart failure is not recommended. Thiazole Indian, that is the pyoglitazone and rosiglitazone are not recommended in heart failure because all of us know that it retains the, I mean, the salt and water. This is the summary of the various trials of, uh, I mean, the exhibition of uh, oral hypoglycemic agents in heart failure. In summary, you see here, not inferior, not superior, but it has been proved that GLP-1 receptor agonist and GLP, SGL2 I mean, inhibitors are superior among the, I mean, uh, uh, oral hypoglycemic agent in patients with heart failure. The dictum today is when you start a patient on I mean, OHA, of course, all of us we give, I mean, metformin, but when there is heart failure, SGL2 inhibitor or GLP-1 receptor agonist has to be added. And another new drug that I would like to, I mean, uh, uh, put a word is uh, hydroxychloroquine. It has, it inhibits the production of TN, TNF-alpha, IL-6, IL-1 and interferon gamma. All inflammatory markers are being suppressed. It has a beneficial lipid lowering effect, antiplated, antithrombotic and nephro I mean, protective effect. Though it may not control the blood sugar very adequately, it is very useful in the prevention of the vascular complications. Yeah, I mean, in uh, the diabetes, uh, in CVD, in COVID scenario, all of us know during COVID scenario, new onset diabetes are known. Existing diabetes are aggravated, both due to the virus, which is affecting the pancreas, as well as to the drug that steroid that we use. And COVID is again immunogenic and thrombogenic. Therefore, more incidents of ACS and myocarditis are seen and we will have to exclude in every CAD or cardiomyopathy, I mean, say, I mean, COVID. It may need an antiviral, steroids, and anticoagulant. Now, coming to the summary of this presentation of cardiovascular disease in diabetes, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, T2-2M is coronary equivalent. Till today, it is right. Hyperglycemia and insulin resistance are the metabolic aspects. Atherosclerosis and arterial stiffness are the pathological aspects. The macrovascular is dependent on lipids and endothelial dysfunction. Microvascular is not dependent on vascular system, but autonomic nervous system dysfunction. And European Society of Guidelines in 2019 has an excellent clinical value and assists the clinician in arriving at the I mean, target rates and the drug therapy. These are the recommendations for the primary prevention of CVD in people with diabetes. First is lifestyle management, weight reduction, medical nutrition therapy, achieve the targets for LDL, physical activity and tobacco cessation. And there should be glycemic target and blood pressure targets, lipid regulation and antiplatelets. I mean, definitely we will be able to reduce the menace of increased CVD in people with diabetes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love to hear, I mean, from the, I mean, audience.